Welcome to MRS Bulletin's Materials News Podcast, providing breakthrough news and interviews with researchers on hot topics in materials research. My name is Laura Lay. How do you find a needle in a haystack? What if that haystack is a sample of liquid containing multiple biological species and you only want to find certain types? This is a challenge being tackled by Jennifer Dion from Stanford University and collaborators using a technique more commonly applied to traditional materials characterization. Our team was excited to develop a way to identify bacteria in complex samples without necessarily having to culture the bacteria. And whether you're talking about you know, bacteria in blood or bacteria in sputum or bacteria in wastewater, Um, There usually aren't very many bacteria in that sample. Generally, the number of colony forming units is quite small of order, maybe, you know, one bacteria up to, you know, maybe in some cases, a a few hundred bacteria per milliliter. And then also the types of bacteria that you could have, you know, are, are very numerous. So for a patient who's experiencing symptoms in the hospital, I think every hour that passes without the appropriate you know, diagnosis and and treatment with appropriate antibiotics could decrease the patient survival chances by about 7%. Culturing bacteria takes hours, and then the bacteria must be identified using specific methods such as the PCO or polymerase chain reaction test. This identifies known genetic markers on the pathogen. Instead, Raman spectroscopy could be used to rapidly detect the presence of pathogens without the need to wait so long. The Raman spectra are complex and are convoluted with spectra from other biological material in the sample, such as blood cells. Jennifer's team collected spectra of two bacteria and used these to train machine learning algorithms to detect their presence in samples that contained red blood cells. The machine learning identified key elements of the spectra that would serve as identifying features. We trained the model on sort of known pure cell samples, and then we gave it some unknowns and and sort of recorded the accuracy it got. But we sort of wanted to take it further. The black box of machine learning that people sort of reference was actually picking up on actually relevant biological, um, you know, molecular differences actually in our bacteria versus just maybe sample noise or or any overfitting of the model. And so we went further and did this further machine learning technique we call wave number wavelength important determination. So we wanted to see which wave numbers is the model picking up on or which ones are the most important for making this classification. And then we actually went back to the literature and looked at are these wave numbers actually corresponding to relevant biological differences? That was Faria Safir who led on this work during her PhD project at Stanford University and is now part of a startup called Pumpkin Seed, co-founded by Jennifer. The team used a few tricks to improve the signal from the bacteria. They added gold nanorods to the samples. Faria explains how these act as nanoantennae. The gold nanorods are sort of um, what we can consider these nano antennas. They basically allow us to enhance the signal um, from hotspots or regions that are in contact with the nanorods. And so the reason that we incorporated them into our sample, we can get a Raman signal from our bacteria without the rods. They're not required for Raman itself. However, without the rods, you have to actually interrogate or sort of take measurements on the samples a lot longer to get sort of signals at the level that we can differentiate. With the rods, we can actually drop, you know, let's say a minute measurement down to the order of like seconds. The surface charge on the nanorods meant that they tended to have bacteria stick to them, which in turn meant that the signal from the bacteria was enhanced by a much greater degree than from the other material in the sample. Using tiny drops of the sample, just two picoliters in volume, also helped to improve the signal intensity. So basic goal was to choose a droplet size where we can minimize the total number of cells present in each droplet so we could get very clear Raman signal from the entirety of the droplet. You know, we're really looking for a needle in a haystack. We're trying to find, you know, one bacteria amongst, let's say, 50 billion red blood cells um, in that one milliliter sample. And so to get that, we wanted to give the best chance to find that bacterial signal without having to culture, without having to grow and basically produce more bacteria for the signal. And so 
the two ways that we went about that one was getting those nano rods to enhance the bacterial signal and then the other way was really tuning our printer so that we could get these droplets with very few cells so we get very clear signal from anything in the entirety of that droplet to find that signal amongst all the the other cells to produce these tiny droplets a bespoke acoustic printer was developed Unlike traditional printing techniques that involve a nozzle which can block or become contaminated, the specialist printer used focused sound waves to break the surface tension of a larger droplet. Tuning parameters such as sound wave frequency meant that the droplets could be reliably printed. Amir Saleh from Cairo University in Egypt explains the benefits of this method. Because we use the acoustic waves to do all the ejection, you actually maintain the cells intact and you maintain the cell viability. So most of other approaches for bioprinting that use the nozzles or like high temperature or high pressure, you lose a percentage, like reason, like a good percentage of the cells. With further work, this novel application of Raman spectroscopy combined with machine learning and advanced printing techniques can be used to rapidly identify many more pathogens, with data acquisition taking perhaps just seconds. This could lead to fast diagnosis of a huge variety of ailments. Ultimately, the technique could be used on samples where the constituents are unknown. Raman spectroscopy coupled with machine learning can identify whether any pathogen is present. This offers significant advantages over current methods. Not only is it faster, but current diagnostic techniques rely on additional knowledge to narrow down what pathogens may be present so that they can be tested for. According to Jennifer, this sort of interdisciplinary work could be a game changer. We're in a really exciting and interesting era when it comes to understanding biology. I mean, biology is so data rich and so complex. I think there are estimates that if you took just a milligram of DNA, the amount of data stored in that snowflake size sample would be equivalent to stacking today's top of the line hard drives to like three times the height of Mount Everest. So there's an enormous amount of data with which to uncover. And yet the techniques we have to understand biology, as incredible that as they are, they're still so limited. So I think we're entering a really cool era where new tools can help us uncover the mysteries of biology and the mysteries of life. This work was published in the recent issue of Nano Letters. My name is Laura Lay from the Materials Research Society. For more news, log on to the MRS Bulletin website at mrsbulletin.org. Follow us on Twitter at MRS Bulletin. Don't miss the next episode of MRS Bulletin Materials News. Subscribe now. Thank you for listening.